Hey everybody, it's ED.Gamer coming at you with another video. Today we are talking about the Valve Steam Deck. Not the Stream Deck by Elgato, but the Valve Steam Deck. Now, both are great devices, but today we're going to talk a little bit about my review of the system, what I like about it, and what I don't like about it, and then we're going to go into a modification. We're going to change out the hard drive on the Steam Deck with a one terabyte M.2 SSD. This device has a 256 gigabyte model. You could also buy it in a 512 gigabyte model or a paltry 64 gigabyte model. I'm not sure what you're going to do with that, but either way, we're going to upgrade it to a terabyte. Now, why would I want to add a one terabyte hard drive to this device? Well, the obvious reason is that adding more memory allows for more games. And sure, that's correct, but I'd like to be able to dual boot the device. I want to keep Steam OS because in games that support it, the experience is flawless. Valve did a great job, and I know new games are being added all the time, but the touch sensitive controls, the buttons, the triggers, the menu systems all work great. The problem, however, is that not all games work well on Steam OS, and many don't work at all. So that becomes a challenge, and that's why putting Windows on the device is of benefit. Now Windows, unfortunately, has a greater amount of processes in the background and is a little bit more resource intensive and it tends to slow down or worsen the gaming experience when compared to Steam OS, which is more lean and modified for playing games. However, me and my friend Demo on the Modern Boomer are gonna get together and we're gonna try to modify the Windows 11 install as much as possible with different tweaks to see if we can improve the performance on this device to be a little bit closer to the Steam OS. But of course, with Windows on the device, I can play Battle.net games, Call of Duty, and others where I can't necessarily on SteamOS. So let's get going. The Steam Deck wants you to think that it's a console, but it's very much a PC. Valve, however, does a great job in attempting to convert your brain into thinking it's a console by a wonderfully put together SteamOS. On games that utilize the SteamOS, the thumbsticks and buttons and touchscreen controls are well thought out and make the device a pleasure to use. However, there are many games that are either incompatible or unknown compatibility. Although that list is changing all the time, the unfortunate reality is that a great majority of Steam titles fall in the unknown or incompatible categories. This was by far the most depressing part of the experience with this device. The Steam Deck is comfortable to hold and it has a wonderful textured surface that feels similar to an Xbox controller. The weight is greater than a Nintendo Switch but not so heavy that it's uncomfortable to use. Perhaps under long gaming sessions, the weight may wear you down, but the battery life unfortunately will not allow that to occur. The controller hardware certainly shines on the Steam Deck. The thumbsticks are my absolute favorite feature of it. They have just the right amount of force to get them to move, and they snap back in a satisfying fashion to neutral position. The thumbsticks are also touch sensitive, so the system knows when your thumbs are resting on the controls. The D-pad and numerical buttons have a good amount of travel and are responsive. They're easy to find with your hands while playing so you don't have to think a lot about where to touch the device. Below the thumbsticks are haptic feedback enabled trackpads which will allow for extra methods of controlling menus and games. The back of the device houses two sets of triggers as well as two sets of bumpers. I find the bumpers to be easier to use and more satisfying than the triggers. Although the triggers are supposed to not be pressure sensitive, they feel overall squishy. The back has a vent over the M.2 hard drive section as well as other hot parts such as the combined AMD processor and GPU termed the APU as well as system memory. It is said that the GPU should be similar to a Radeon RX 6000 and the processor should be similar to an AMD Ryzen 3000. However, it's difficult to make specific comparisons because there are no chips that have the exact mirror image structure as the Steam Deck not to mention the amount of cores that, say, the Radeon 67 XT has. The sound is decent for a small device, but certainly nothing amazing. The top of the device has a fan which sometimes can get pretty loud. Obviously, there's a lot of heat to mitigate in such a small device running AAA gaming titles, but with headphones, that problem fixes itself. The top of the device has a power button as well as a volume up and volume down button. The headphone jack port is located here as well. The bottom of the device houses a very necessary micro SD card slot which you can utilize to increase your overall system memory. If I were a betting man, I would say that the Steam Deck is going to get more and more popular over time. The device is well built, the Steam OS is well thought out, 
and Steam even supplies Windows drivers for installing Windows 10 or 11 on the device. And you can buy replacement parts now on iFixit easily and do repairs yourself. The only thing that's lacking here is the compatibility of titles with the OS. That's what is so compelling about doing an install of Windows on the device or possibly doing a dual boot scenario so that you can go into the other game launchers and play other games or simply have a higher compatibility with Steam games in general. Right now, Steam decks seem to be as rare as hen's teeth. I would definitely keep an eye on this device because I think it's going places. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to want to do when we modify the Steam Deck is we're going to want to obviously shut it off. So when we do that, that's a lot different than just hitting the power button. You want to hit the Steam Menu button, you want to navigate down to power, hit the A button, and you want to not go to sleep, you want to go to shut down. Now that's going to put the system down completely and it will allow us to more safely modify the device. All right, now that we have the device off, we're going to take the case. Now, you may have gotten a case with your Steam Deck, not sure if all of the flavors come with it, but I did. So we're gonna put it in the case so that the buttons don't necessarily trigger and start up the system all over again. All right, so the way that the Steam Deck is opened is actually really, really simple. And that's one of the great things about it. There are eight screws. Four long screws on the edges and four short screws in the middle. Let's take them out. I like to put the screws kind of in the same format as they were on the device so that I don't mess it up and put the wrong screw back in the wrong hole. This is a great little kit from iFixit that comes with multiple different bits and spudgers, which we'll be using also in a short amount of time. Also on iFixit, you can actually go on their website and you can order basically any part for the Steam Deck that you need. And all of it is user repairable, depending on your level of competency and comfort level. I'm not sure what that will do to the overall warranty on the device, but either way, you can do it if you want to. Just make sure that you don't electrocute yourself or short out the board. All right, I have one more screw left. I lied, I don't have one more screw left. I have now one more screw left. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a hint. I actually recorded this video already, but I was using a DJI camera and the screens were so blurry that I felt that it wasn't even worth producing the video. So. Here is our new M.2 chip. I'll bring this down so you can see it. And this is a 2230 size M.2. They are tough to find. And I've found that you can get them on eBay as well as a couple of websites that sell them. You have to make sure you're getting the right version. But if you get it, it will work great. I think that right now the Microsoft Surface tablets are utilizing the 2230 M.2. So you might want to look there when you're looking for a replacement one terabyte drive or just a higher drive in general. You don't have to do one terabyte. So once you have the eight screws out, you're going to look for the seam on the device. The seam is pretty easy to see. Goes across there. Actually, let's take out the micro SD card and it extends all the way up on the side. So you can use a spudging tool or a spudger or you can get your fingernail in there to get it started. Which tend to work well for me when I did it last. Let's see if I can be lucky again. Three hours later. All right, while we're here, let's go over some of the innards of the device. 
Underneath this heat shield are the important hot components such as the processor and GPU combined, the system memory, as well as the M.2, which we're going to replace in a couple of minutes. Over here you have the battery, which is big, but obviously not big enough. If you've read much about the Steam Deck, you see that the battery is an issue and does wear out pretty quickly. Over on this side and this side, you have your bumper or your triggers rather, and you have the boards for your left and right thumbsticks here, which are all user replaceable. And of course the fan in the center. Now let's get to taking out the M.2. Now, there are three screws that you need to take out. There's one at the top on the left, one at the bottom on the left, and then one underneath this piece of aluminum foil. You pull it back, you can see it here. There are some models of the Steam Deck which actually have another battery, down, another screw rather down here, but this version doesn't have it. So let's take off the heat shield. three screws here. So basically, remember, you're looking at eight screws in the back, three screws here, and one screw on the M.2, and that's basically it. Now, when we replace the M.2, we're going to use the Steam Deck Recovery Software use a, on Windows at least, use a free tool like Rufus to create a bootable USB stick with the recovery software on it. You'll wanna boot with the USB stick plugged in. You'll wanna hit the volume down button as well as the power button. Once you see the Steam Deck logo, you can release and wait for the bootloader to come up to which you will tell the device to boot onto the USB stick where the software will then load in order to reformat the new hard drive and install SteamOS onto it. Okay, so we took the heat shield off. Here you actually see some thermal stickers which uh, help dissipate some of the heat. Right here is your M.2 hard drive. One screw right here. Oh, actually, before we do that, it is important to undo the battery because this is how you can either get electrocuted or potentially short out some of the hardware. This, like the um, case, is a challenge to remove. You have to kind of take one side, then the other side, then one side, then the other side. And then once it's out like that, you can take out the M.2 SSD. One screw pops it up about a 40 degree angle. And then it comes out easy peasy. There is a heat wrap around the SSD. You can take that out, put it away, grab your replacement SSD, slide it in, simply redo the steps you did, and you're done. So this is a cheaper way of upgrading your device than paying for a 512 gigabyte model. Um, you just got to be able to find one of these. I was able to find one on eBay. Um, I paid under $200 for it. I think 170 bucks. So you can buy the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck and uh, just buy the one terabyte and uh, save yourself a couple hundred bucks. All right. You want to make sure this makes good contact because this is where your heat stickers come in contact with the hot components. Okay, so after you put those three screws back in and get your heat shield firmly in place, you really just have to snap on the back plastic cover again and re-tighten the eight screws that you took out initially to remove the backing. It's really pretty simple and the whole process should take about a half hour or less. 
Always make sure that you disconnect the battery and that you're properly grounded so you don't short out any of the fragile components inside the Steam Deck. Hope this video was helpful guys and thanks for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Please also follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. And check out www.themodernboomer.com to check out our other channel with my good friend Damo, The Modern Boomer. We'll be taking the Steam Deck to the next level by trying to optimize a Windows 11 install and see what kind of performance we can push out of the unit. Thanks a lot guys, have a good one.